Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I am doing something a little bit different today. So I have taken a bunch of old videos um, from over the years of my like go-to recipes that you guys always ask for links to and stuff like that, like videos that I've done. So um, we're gonna have our goulash recipe, my chili recipe, um, my pasta bake, my chicken pot pie, uh, marry me chicken. We're gonna have all, oh, ooey gooey burgers. There's gonna be a whole bunch of different recipes in this video. So be sure to save this one um, so you can refer back to it if you want to cook one of my recipes that I do all the time. But I hope you guys will enjoy this. I've had a suggestion to do this video for quite a while now and I am finally just taking the time instead of like filming a new video just to compile all these recipes together for you guys in one video. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump right in and uh, get to cooking some yummy stuff. All right, friends, the first recipe that we have in this video, I think this was from 2017, 2016, around that time when I filmed this, but this is Donnie's dad's goulash recipe. So this is super simple and easy. All you need is a pound of ground beef or ground turkey, a can of corn, a can of mushrooms, a pound of elbow macaroni, and two jars of spaghetti sauce. Sometimes I do fresh mushrooms with this too and just cook them up a little bit before I put them in. But anyways, you're gonna start off boiling a pot of water for your noodles. Get those dumped in whenever the water starts boiling. While the noodles are cooking, you're gonna want to brown your meat. So whether you're using turkey or beef or whatever kind of ground meat you're using, get that into your pan and get that all cooked up. Once your meat is done, you wanna drain off the fat and then dump that into a pot. You could wait till your noodles are done and then just use that same pot if you want less dishes. But anyways, you're gonna put your meat into a pot, you're gonna drain your corn, drain your mushrooms, or if you're using fresh mushrooms, cook those up and get those ready to go in with the meat also. But you're gonna dump the corn and the mushrooms in with the meat and then you're going to drain your noodles when those are done, let those drain off all of the water and then you're gonna add your two jars of spaghetti sauce to the pot pot, add your noodles and stir it all up and you're ready to go. This is a super simple, fast, easy recipe and it makes a ton of leftovers. So that is always a plus. All right, next up we are gonna do chicken pot pie. So you're gonna need one can of ready to bake biscuits, three cans of cream of chicken soup, just the standard size cans, and then a pound and a half of chicken thighs. Then you're also gonna need half of a white or yellow onion, some pepper, and a bag of frozen mixed vegetables, whatever kind you wanna use. The first thing you wanna do is check your biscuits and see what the cooking instructions are, or the baking instructions rather, um, and preheat your oven to whatever it says. So mine said 325, so I'm gonna preheat my oven to 325. I used to bake the biscuits right on top of the pie filling, but they would never turn out just perfect. So I started baking them partially in the oven before putting them on top of the pie mixture. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna bake them partially, not the full time, probably like half the time. But in the meantime, while the oven is preheating, I am dicing up my half of a white onion, and then I'm gonna take those chicken thighs and cut them into small bite-sized pieces. Now I've got my pan and I'm putting the heat on medium high, adding a little bit of olive oil and I'm gonna add those onions in and get those started. Um, once those are done, just like a few minutes on the onions, I'm gonna add in the chicken and some pepper and get the chicken cooked up. By the time I start those onions in the olive oil, the oven is preheated. So I'm gonna stick those biscuits in and like I said, just cook them for like half the time that the um, instructions call for on the back. And then you're gonna pull those out and we'll put those on top of the um, pie filling here in just a little bit. But like I said, I'm adding some pepper to the chicken. I'm gonna get the chicken cooked all the way through and then I will add in the frozen vegetables and get those warmed up and thawed out. Um, so as you can see here, the chicken is now done. And so I'm adding in the full bag of those frozen vegetables and we're gonna get those cooked in as well. So 
So by the time the chicken and the vegetables are done, the timer goes off on the oven and the biscuits are halfway cooked now. So we're gonna set those aside and then add in the three cans of cream of chicken and get that stirred in. I'm adding some more pepper. I'm gonna stir that in and then we're gonna bring this mixture to a boil before we add the biscuits on top. All right, now I'm gonna take those partially cooked biscuits and put those on top of the pie filling. So we're gonna get those situated and then we're gonna pop this whole thing back in the oven at the same temperature that we originally did the biscuits. And I don't really have a time frame for this, so just keep an eye on it. When your biscuits start to turn a nice golden brown like this, you're probably good to go. So your filling is gonna be all bubbly. Your biscuits are gonna be perfectly golden brown. It smells so good. All right, next up we are doing breakfast burritos and these are obviously really good for breakfast but we do these for dinner too and we also make like batches of these and freeze them um, when i did this video i used small tortillas um, whole wheat tortillas and these work way better with burrito sized tortillas so keep that in mind i was just using what i had on hand when i filmed this um, but burrito size works way, way better. So we have got four large russet potatoes. I've got some tortillas. Like I said, make sure you get burrito tortillas because they work so much better for wrapping these burritos. Um, one pound of maple sausage. Regular sausage is okay, but the maple sausage just makes the flavor absolutely incredible. Um, you need some shredded cheddar cheese and then also some bacon. Along with that, you are gonna need some eggs. So I've got 10 eggs here. I just had to recount. Um, I'm not using the original like voiceover for all of these cooking videos because they all sound so different. And I was like, you know, there it's like parts of other videos. So anyways, um, I'm kind of like recapping these recipes as I'm watching them. But first thing I'm doing, I'm filling up my pot. We have this instant water, instant hot water dispenser on our sink. So that's what that was. But I'm filling up the pot with hot water, getting that to a boil. I am washing off my potatoes and I am going to get those cut up um, into like bite-sized pieces. Gonna throw those into my boiling water, boil those until a fork can easily stick into them. That's when you know they are good to go and ready to go in the burritos. While those are cooking, I am taking just however many slices of bacon you want, um, cutting those into small little pieces, and then we're gonna get these into a pan and cook up the bacon. You can cook your bacon however you want to. Like if you wanna cook the strips of bacon and then cut it up, that's doable also. Um, but this is just the way that I like to do it. I worked at a coffee shop in college and this is how we made the breakfast burritos at the coffee shop. And so I just always make them like this now. But while the bacon is cooking in that pan, the potatoes are cooking in the pot, we're gonna brown up that maple sausage in another pan. Once the sausage and the bacon is done, I'm gonna add the bacon in with the sausage and get those combined. And then I'm gonna take all of those eggs and crack them into a bowl. These are gonna get cooked in the same pan that we cooked the bacon in because there's some bacon grease in there. And if you know, you know, cooking with bacon grease when you're making breakfast or anything, it just 
taste so good. Um, so I'm gonna whisk these up. I'm also gonna add a little bit of pepper and then get these put into the pan that I cooked the bacon in. Now you can totally buy pre-shredded cheese that comes in a bag, but we had a block of cheese, so I am just going to work on shredding up some cheddar cheese. You probably need about two cups or more, so if you're gonna buy bagged, I would probably buy like four cups because depending on how cheesy you want your burritos, you might want more, more than that. But I'm just gonna shred this up and then I'm gonna get everything added into a really big bowl. So I'm gonna get the bacon, the sausage, the potatoes, and the eggs all combined in a big bowl and we're gonna get all of that stirred up. Now it's time for the little assembly line and like I said in the beginning, I can't stress this enough, use burrito tortillas. It will come out so much better. <laughs> These little tiny tortillas were not doing it, but I had already started, it, I was already committed. We didn't have any burrito tortillas when I filmed this. Um, gosh, probably a year and a half ago when I filmed this part, this recipe. Um, but anyways, you're just gonna take your tortilla, put some of the filling on there, sprinkle some cheese, and then fold them up. This is not a good example of how to fold um, burritos, but you guys get the gist. If you use a burrito tortilla, it will work so much better. Um, so I like to do these in batches, obviously, um, but the trick is to first do this and then you want to pan fry it so you're going to put a little butter or a little oil or some cooking spray or something in a pan and kind of fry them up so they get crispy on the outside and it's so good so when i do batches like this um, i will just freeze the burritos like wrap them in plastic wrap and then or put them in like a ziploc baggie um, and then when you're ready to eat just pull out one burrito wrap it in a paper towel and microwave it for like a minute or a minute and a half depending um, and then you want to put it into the pan and crispy it up so microwave it first you know it gets good and warm through the middle and then fry it up in a pan um, so if it's if it's frozen um, but if it's fresh like if you just made it you obviously don't need to heat it up because the filling is already warm so then you just need to fry it up on a pan so hopefully that makes sense but that is my breakfast burrito recipe All right, next up we are doing marry me chicken. So you're gonna need one tablespoon extra virgin olive oil, six bone in skin on chicken thighs, or you can do boneless skinless like I did in this recipe, about two pounds, some salt, I'm using pink Himalayan salt, um, ground pepper, garlic, minced garlic, one tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves or dried thyme leaves is what I used, one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, some chicken broth, you're gonna need three quarters cup of chicken broth, half a cup heavy cream, half a cup chopped sun-dried tomatoes, and a quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan. So to cook this chicken, you're gonna preheat your oven to 375 degrees, and then in a large oven-safe skillet over medium-high heat, you wanna heat some olive oil. You're gonna season your chicken with salt and pepper, and then you wanna sear it on both sides until it's golden, so you wanna do like four to five minutes per side. And then you're gonna transfer the chicken to a plate and pour off half of the fat from the skillet. Now you wanna keep your skillet on medium heat and you're gonna add in your garlic, thyme, red pepper flakes, and then you're gonna cook until that is fragrant for about one minute. Then you're gonna stir in your broth, heavy cream, sun-dried tomatoes, and Parmesan cheese, and you can season that with more salt and pepper if you want to. Then you're gonna bring that to a simmer. Once that comes to a simmer, you're gonna return your chicken to the skillet and if you have skin on chicken, then you're gonna want the skin side up. If you're doing boneless skinless like mine, it really doesn't matter which side you do. I've done it both ways with the bone in and the skin on and also boneless skinless and turns out the same each time. So um, either way, whatever you guys prefer. Now you're gonna pop that skillet into the oven for 20 minutes, and when it's done, you can serve it with whatever you want to. We like to do mashed potatoes and vegetables most of the time. 
So I am just dicing up some red potatoes and I'm gonna get those boiling while the chicken is cooking. Um, I'm just gonna boil them until they're soft like when you poke it with a fork. Once they're done boiling, I'm going to drain off the water, add two tablespoons of butter. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of whole milk, a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese and some pepper and then we're gonna just mash that all up and these are so good. I actually sometimes add garlic in there too and they're like garlic Parmesan mashed potatoes, super, super good. So um, along with the potatoes, I just did some vegetables. I did frozen vegetables on the stove top and just added in some, um, like I don't even remember what kind of seasoning, whatever kind of seasoning you like to put on your vegetables. Um, so then we are just gonna plate this up, mashed potatoes, vegetables, and some delicious Mary Me chicken. We like to put the chicken on top of the potatoes and use the sauce as like a gravy. And it is super, super good. All right, now we're gonna do my pasta bake. This is a really good dinner recipe. We call it poor man's lasagna, we call it pasta bake, whatever you wanna call it. We love to make this. So what you're gonna need is some minced garlic, two jars of your favorite spaghetti sauce, some rotini noodles, a yellow or white onion, two cups of mozzarella cheese, and a pound of ground sausage, and a pound of ground beef or ground turkey, whatever type of meat you wanna use. So the first thing that I am doing is preheating my oven to 350 degrees and then I'm gonna get my onion diced up. So you're gonna wanna cook up about a pound of that rotini pasta. So I have a pot with water and I'm gonna get that boiling. I'm also adding that onion to a pan with some olive oil so I can get those started. Once I've cooked that onion for a couple minutes and it's starting to get soft, I'm adding a tablespoon of minced garlic in with that and just until it's fragrant and then I'm gonna add in my meat. So I'm adding in my pound of ground beef and my pound of ground sausage. All right, the meat is done, so we are going to drain the fat off of that, return it to the stove top, and add two jars of pasta sauce. I'm gonna get that all mixed up and then pop a lid on there and bring it to a simmer. And when the noodles are done, I'm going to get those drained. Now I'm taking out a baking dish and we are gonna layer all of this stuff up. So I'm adding a little bit of the sauce and meat mixture to the bottom of the pan, then adding a layer of noodles, a layer of cheese, and then we're gonna repeat that process until the last layer that you have is meat and cheese. All right, then you wanna pop some tin foil on top and stick that in the oven on the middle rack for 20 minutes. Pull it out, take the tin foil off and put it back in for five to 10 minutes until it's nice and golden brown and bubbly on top and then you're ready to serve it up. Next up on the list, we have ooey gooey burgers. So for the ooey gooey burgers, you're gonna need mayonnaise, ketchup, Best Foods burger sauce, or if you're on the East Coast, it is Hellman's, I believe, but you need the classic burger sauce. That is what makes these ooey gooey burgers the way that they are. You're also gonna need some ground beef, however much you need to make burgers for your entire family. And then you also need some pepper, some salt, and you're gonna need a yellow or white onion, some balsamic vinegar, 
some brown sugar, some sliced cheddar cheese, and some hamburger buns. I'm gonna start off by slicing up this onion into thin slices. And then you're gonna form your ground beef into your burger patties. You could totally buy frozen ground beef patties that are already formed. You could do turkey burger, you could do Beyond Meat, whatever it is that you wanna do for these burgers. Then I'm gonna melt about a tablespoon of butter in a pan and then add the onions once that is melted and season that with salt and pepper. You're also gonna season your burgers with salt and pepper on both sides, and we just have this cast iron skillet that I use on my stove tops. Once the onions are soft and translucent, kind of, you're gonna add in a tablespoon of brown sugar and a good squeeze of that balsamic vinegar. Now I'm gonna slice up some cheese. The kids don't like cheese on their burgers. I keep telling them they're missing out, but they insist they don't like cheese on their burgers. So I'm putting cheese on the burgers that we want. The kids are just having their burgers plain with ketchup. I also tell them they're missing out on the ooey gooey burgers, but that's just how they like them. So here is the important part, the assembly of the ooey gooey burger. So first you're gonna do mayonnaise on both sides of the bun. Then you're gonna do ketchup. Like I said, I didn't really realize we were out of ketchup, so. I put as much as I could, and then the burger sauce. Then take a knife, spread that around, and get it mixed together. And this is Donnie's burger that I'm assembling here. He's having a double, he always has a double, so I'm gonna put both hamburger patties stacked on top of each other like this. And then you're gonna take a big heaping spoonful of the caramelized onions right on top, Put your burger together and there you have the ooey gooey burger and you can see why it is called that. Make sure you have lots of napkins. <laughs> this chili recipe you're gonna need a quarter cup of taco seasoning or one packet of taco seasoning one can of kidney beans that are drained and rinsed a can of chili beans that are drained and rinsed a can of black beans that are drained and rinsed and then one can of corn that is drained and then one can of chili two cans of diced tomatoes with the juice one bell pepper whatever color you would like I like to use green just to add some color to the chili where everything is kind of the same color, one small yellow onion, and a pound of ground beef. Start off by dicing your yellow onion and your green bell pepper. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil to a skillet and add in the onions and green bell pepper that I just cut up and cook those until they are a little bit soft and translucent. Then we're gonna add in the ground beef and cook that until it is browned. While that is cooking, I'm gonna get everything else started in the pot here. I'm just gonna use my can opener, open up all the cans, get everything ready to go into the pot. So first off, I'm adding the tomatoes and the chili because those are two things I don't have to like drain or anything. So I'm gonna get those in and get that stirred up and started. Don't mind the sink full of dirty dishes. This is real life here, not staged. Um, so I'm gonna drain and rinse all of the beans that need to be drained and rinsed and get those added to the pot with the tomatoes and the chili. And 
then I'm gonna drain the corn and add that into the pot as well. And then I'm gonna add my ground beef with the diced tomatoes and bell peppers and get everything stirred up. I also wanted to mention you could totally do this as a one pot deal where you cook the meat in the pot before you add everything else. After I have it all stirred up, I'm adding in the packet of taco seasoning. I know I showed you guys a big thing of taco seasoning in the beginning, but I ended up having one packet of taco seasoning left, so I just went ahead and used that instead of opening up my new one. And so after I get the taco seasoning in, we're just gonna stir it all up and then put the lid on and let it simmer on like medium low in between there um, for about 30 minutes and then you'll see it kind of starts out chunky before you put the lid on and let it simmer and then when you take the lid off all the juices from the beans and everything have come out and it's just perfect and has a really good flavor. The voiceover that you heard during this whole recipe was the original one from when I actually filmed this video, but I wanted to just pop on here real quick and mention that this recipe it makes a lot of leftovers. So when I filmed this, I was cooking this to pack up for Donnie and his dad to take on a hunting trip. Um, but if I were to be cooking this for dinner, I would just dish it up into bowls and we usually serve it with Frito chips on top and some shredded cheddar cheese and it's super good that way. It's also really good with sour cream and avocados. But that is gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of my go-to recipes in one place. You don't have to search all over my channel. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Hope you guys are having an awesome weekend and I will see you guys again very soon in my next video. Bye.